Howdy chaps and chapettes, um, welcome back to another episode where we are tackling the boot channels on the Falcon Coupe. Unfortunately yesterday I was planning on videoing but somebody was on the roof replacing the gutters and it uh, ruined a perfectly good opportunity to do some fantastic filming and the other thing is uh, I didn't film putting on the quarter panel of the Commodore because it required a reasonably large amount of concentration so that I didn't screw anything up so unfortunately if you're keen for that one I might have just glossed over that one just to get it done um, but if you'd followed my Graham's restorations on Facebook or Rusty Cars with Graham on Instagram you would have seen the updates to that and that's uh, going rather well and I will show you that in a second but I'll show you what I've done to the, the boot channels on the Falcon first so welcome back to some regular programming so we've been working on this corner now what I'll do is I'll go grab the actual piece that needs to go in there first well that came out of there first is what I should say uh, there's a piece of it and I will clean my bench eventually <laughs> here's the other piece so we wander back over here how how this is actually what was living in that hole and obviously that was under there so I chopped it all out remade a section of gutter from here to here now you might go what's going on here well even though it's cut through there, I needed to weld this to the, the gutter that's below it, so I actually had to grind off that top skin so I could actually weld the two bottom skins together. And I put the little recess in there as best I can with what I've got, like that, because that's where these three layers actually join together in that one spot. And I started making this piece. And I'm going to make it in two bits so that also once again ground off the top layer so I could weld it and go across there I do need to just zap up that corner and then I need to make this next bit that's going to go in here and then go down and then go flat and then that'll be welded here and along here and then that's the top section of this boot corner done and then it's fairly straightforward in doing uh, another section for the top here that comes across and down and we'll run you through all this today hopefully and um, whatnot so that's what we got to yesterday unfortunately I couldn't film it because <sighs> unfortunately the downside with being a youtuber is unfortunately not all situations allow for good filming so that didn't happen unfortunately but you know I've recessed it so that's the the recess that's in there well what's left of it anyway and that panel sits over the top of this one. It's all a bit uh, comfort com compute. Wow, use your English, Graham. Uh, complicated, but uh, it's all fairly straightforward. Um, if you don't have the skills to fold up this gutter, you can actually buy this section, which goes from here all the way to here. Oops, there. Uh, that is one big piece, and you can buy that from Mr. Astle. Um, and it's huge and it's pretty good so because the way these gutters work is they're actually a two-piece so this piece is separate to the gutter the gutter actually sits underneath it as you can see right there so the gutter itself can be removed separately and all you have to do is just that next lip and we've got a fix in here too so it's all fun now what I'll do is I'll show you the Commodore which only is interested to a few people um, but quarter panels on chaps fairly big job I wouldn't recommend it for a first timer um, because it's you know a fairly decent job so yeah we had to cut through here remove the quarter panel throw the old one away I had to rework inside the wheel arch a little bit to make it prettier prep up all the seams make sure that I welded the filler neck to the outside quarter panel before putting it on and then of course I had to yeah, stay stay make sure I put panel bond in here 
and there's a foam expansion oh, it's like expander foam almost but it's sort of a high strength um, structural foam that goes in here there's another one that goes down there as well but this one was the one that has 10 seconds of uh, dwell time and 40 seconds of work time so you gotta put it on and then slap your quarter panel on really fast but it's all together it lines up beautifully I've just got to grind down some welds and then finish them up with a little bit of filler over the tops so yeah it was fairly straightforward just drill out the spot welds look at your plans cut where they want you to cut rip it off fix up everything else make sure your quarter panel just sits on perfectly um, that is on and off about a million times and then it's go time and then you just stick the the goop in the panel bond and the foam and then you stack stick the quarter panel on and hope you got it back in the right spot <laughs> but it's, it's fairly easy especially if you leave some of the old seam sealer around because the quarter panel will peel it off so you you do have a pretty epically good way of telling where it was so that's on looking good let's hope to the good lord above that this actually passes this time because i don't really want to do this for a third time um, if it fails again i'm probably going to give up on this car and use it as a parts car and buy a different rod off with damage somewhere else and give up on this one because i can't be bothered fixing it three times if it fails it shouldn't but you know you gotta have a contingency plan it shouldn't I mean it shouldn't have failed the first time honestly um, but it shouldn't this time there's no filler in that quarter panel none what's whatsoever um, so yeah that's looking lovely had the door on and off about a hundred times and yeah we've made some good progress on the coupe as well so we're working on at the moment clearing out all the channels up around the rear window that's as anybody knows quite a time consuming task and not the world's funnest actually this one's come out pretty darn good and across here we've got a tickle here a little bit where they join in that's about it through there maybe bend it up a little bit it's a bit down there a bit and then we'll have to tackle getting all this apart and put in a new section probably here and here so I don't know I'm trying to do um, good videos again um, unfortunately life kicks you occasionally and uh, content's a bit hard to do at times but anyway first things first let's roll up well not roll up let's roll up let's fold up a small section to go in here it's gonna be now these are I didn't realize how amazing these were until recently but I use these to make a lot of parts because what you can do is you got this little lock thing here yeah yeah you always zero it otherwise you'll be a bit stuffed and for example you can go like this and go from the edge to edge and put it and it's got to be on the inside of the fold too by the way and you'll better lock it in with that guy and then scribe it on another piece of steel and you will have the exact same fold across there so that's how amazing these are at getting things right because not only have you got a depth gauge on the bottom you've got the inside diameter and the outside diameter so um, I think they're called verniers or something calipers whatever digital caliper there you go um, I'm pretty sure this was a $20 one from oh what's the place called no idea um, fairly cheap it wasn't expensive at all Audi I think is what it was yeah there we go it's from Audi and it's pretty accurate so get yourself one of these if you're twiddling away with fiddly work like this because it is very handy at getting things horrifically accurate so stay tuned we'll fold up a new piece and test it in there eh thought I'd quickly add in another trick is you can use a cheap paintbrush to apply your bog once you've mixed it you can brush it on it makes putting it in areas such as this way easier the next thing is making up this next piece so I've got a little scrap piece of steel it's not really scrap it's just an offcut and I've used the calipers and I've put 
one foot off the edge and the other bit has scribed a beautifully straight line so that's how they work and that's how you know a pretty darn close um, way of matching sort of measurements and stuff so in theory that one should also be yep pretty much identical so that's how I do that and I can and basically this the scribe line will be the same as that line so if that edge is straight that line will be straight so that's a helpful hint when using these and then all I've got to do now is just put it in the folder and go whoop, and then flip it and do the other one and then trim it off and put it into the gutter it's fairly straightforward so um, that's how that works I hope it's useful also mixing bog on an onion board amazing I've actually made that one run out so and that's what I meant by a cheap paintbrush too I mean they're so cheap you're not really worried if you wreck one and dolphin glazes absolutely amazing filler absolutely great stuff so I'm going to fold up this little piece and catch up in a second and there we have it folks the next little piece it's got a little recess in it to match that one oops it's a bit of a too good of a fit it'll just fall through I've just got a copper spray that on the back so that when I weld it in so it's only gonna have like two or three plug welds through that bit and then it's gonna be just the old-fashioned butt join through there and that is that section done well up there anyway this area is still stuffed as I said and then we can work on making effectively the top of the quarter panel that wraps around comes across and then down and we're going to do it in a very similar fashion but it doesn't need to have any of these recesses in it because it's the top layer so it should be fairly straightforward it should be just a flat with a fold down a bit another fold and then I'll do it very similar and I'll probably do it halfway through so that the two butt joins are not on top of each other so they're separate I'll do it in the middle and then do another one of these that comes up across and joins through the center and then that should be that whole area done that we can just move right along so that's my suggestion if you're trying to repair what you've got um, fairly straightforward I might actually have to just looking at that I might have to hammer in let's not forget that I think it needs to have a little notch down there a step to go down into that little groove there so I might have to put that in in a second but that's not too hard just take a device and just tap it over an edge piece of keiko but uh, there we go that's one way to make two pieces so it's not um, it's one way to make a relatively hard to make in one piece shape if that makes sense make it in a couple of bits and weld it together and that's how you can do that I mean you could also do uh, that bit and then weld on a side piece if you that way inclined but what I did with this one is I actually made that in one piece and then stretched it because it actually has a slight curve in it going that way so it tapers along here so yeah well, I'll show you on this one see it's it's got a curve in it as well and it tapers so that one had to match that so I'll weld this in and we'll uh, see where we get up to next Right, we've just etched, uh, well, etch primed here where it's going to be seen and then copper sprayed where it's going to be hidden. And then we can work on the next piece. I realised after doing that that I didn't get that in a terribly straight line. Um, but if I want to, I can just blade it straight through air, which is what I might do just because it bugs me slightly. Um, but anyway, it's no neither here nor there. Well, there's every chance that that's actually what the original piece looked like because I did copy it directly from it so I don't know I might just straighten it up a little bit it bothers me uh, but now we can just work on this next bit which should be measure this from here to here do a fold go across probably halfway and then do a little kick back the other way and then we can drop that in and then make it a piece that goes through here so our new piece is tacked in just one two zaps sitting on top all we're going to do is make sure I tap these two seams together nice and flat and tack them and weld and then I've got to come through here and put two plug weld holes through here so just a drill and a drill and one there and then I could just whittle up that next piece that'll just drop in there and that'll be this whole section done 
so looking not too shabby it'll be much better than that anyway so I'll weld that in and we'll catch you up in a second righty so I've made obviously made that piece weld it in I actually touched up a couple of holes I think I might need to do that one as well but obviously once you do weld grind it back you want to come back and touch up anywhere there's a a little hole potentially it's always a good thing to check over so we now have effectively replaced all of that in one go well not one go in about 17 different pieces but you get the gist of it all I gotta do now is grind down those welds which I'm not going to bore you with grind down that those two etch prime and that whole corner is fixed also we have been working on the Commodore in between things and in spare time so the welds are ground down on that uh, a very very minute amount of filler is skimmed over them um, nothing like you'd uh, believe but um, yeah that's looking pretty flash actually so yeah you just grind down your welds and just run a little skim over them and just pretty them up so they're all looking good and uh, for those curious I may or may not have done this already if not I'll cut it out um, that's what three millimeters of filler looks like and that's all that Regency will accept if you'd like to know what three millimeters is in bog terms that's it right there any more than that you will be rejected quite incredible isn't it so I'm gonna leave the video here I hope you enjoy some the rust repair goodness and um, hope you enjoyed this one and I'll catch you on the next one